original title of the sermon was going to be Good, Better, Bestie. But at the last minute, I called Melanie and changed it. And I noticed if you look in your bulletins, it's now called... Extraordinary. Gary. So any Garys this morning, I guess this sermon's for you. Actually, it's for everyone. <laughs> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The other day on the radio, I heard a song I hadn't heard in a while. And it goes back to the, <gasps> gasp, all the way back to the 20th century. Back to the 90s, believe it or not. A uh, song from Joe Walsh, and a lot of people know Joe Walsh from the Eagles and things like that. The song is Ordinary Average Guy. I always loved the lyrics of that. And Joe Walsh is just that kind of singer who always just sort of takes a very light-hearted look at life. I mean, his songs like Life's Been Good and things like that. It just, so hearing him do Ordinary Average Guy, it just sort of rang with me a little bit. Uh, if you ever get a chance to hear it, like YouTube or something like that, go for it. But with that in mind, I'd like to take an informal poll this morning. How many of you consider yourself ordinary? Raise your hands. Oh. How many of you consider yourself extraordinary or even extraordinary? Oh, you're a child of God. I, I love that, Mrs. L. It's like, Kurt, too. And it was like this morning I had asked at the early service and there was this like one person who put their hand up for extraordinary and I like went over to them and I said, okay, the rest of the sermon's not, of, not for you. It's <laughs> but, okay. So, a little bit of mixture between ordinary and extraordinary. Now, I've got another question for you. This is for the ordinary people, like I said. Because if you're ordinary... Chances are you have a best friend, okay? Who in here has a best friend of the ordinary people? Hmm, okay. But Kurt, I thought you were extraordinary to start. Now you're ordinary with a best friend, which is good. It's always good to have a best friend. But um, another question, how long has that person been your best friend? Since school? Okay. How about... Middle school? How about high school? College? Your workplace? Your neighborhood? Wait for this one. Church? <laughs> well, ponder this for a moment. If you consider yourself ordinary, your best friend or your bestie doesn't think that you're ordinary. They think that you're extraordinary, which is a good thing, but you sometimes wonder, like, what do they see in me? But then you look at your best friend, and then you realize, start to realize there was something about this person that you were just attracted to. There was something about them that, some quality they had that, Maybe they didn't realize they had, but you saw that in them. And the same thing happens, that they see it in you as well. And a great example of that is in the gospel reading for this morning. Jesus is beginning to call his disciples. He's assembling his team, as it were. Well, let's see. The first thing that you need on a team like this is a good PR person, okay? Got to handle the public relations because... You're about to embark on something radically different. It's going to have continual growth, not just potential growth, but continual growth, and it's going to have eternal implications. Okay, so it seems critical that you need the right people in the right place at the right time. Okay, let's check out the first four hires. Let's see, there's Simon and his brother Andrew, both fishermen. Okay, okay. That makes sense because if you're going to be traveling around the countryside and you're always going to be near the Sea of Galilee and, and other things, yeah, fishermen come in handy because you've got to eat. So yeah, that, that makes sense. Well, let's have some fishermen. And let's see, then there's Simon, who will later be known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, another set of brothers, both fishermen. Hmm. 
where I said, well, those are the first ones. And I realized it's James and John that I want to talk about, the Sons of Thunder. Now, to an onlooker, this looks like a rather odd choice that four out of the 12 apostles, works out to one third of them, see I did my math, are all fishermen. And you know, that's an odd way to start a ministry team with four fishermen. But here's the thing, Jesus saw something in them that they may not have seen in themselves. And I can just imagine being fishers of people, catching people, there was something about Jesus' invitation that must have just, it wasn't words, it was something that they felt in their hearts, that they knew this was something special, and maybe, just maybe, this is worth looking into, even though none of them have ever been, did any kind of rabbinical studies or anything like that. All they knew was fishing. We've often heard the expression, WWJD, what would Jesus do? But since the gospel lesson is about responding, maybe it should be WWYD. What would you do? Good question. We've got the, um, well, I guess the advantage of having 2020 hindsight, but what if you didn't know the story? Maybe you'd say, I'm just ordinary. Why would I be called? I'm not a fisherman, I'm an engineer, or I'm a state worker, or insert whatever profession you are, or I am a child, or I am retired. Or how about this one, I can't do it on my own, heaven forbid. Uh-uh, heaven doesn't forbid that, not at all. The thing is, is that we don't need to do it alone. James and John had each other, they had their brothers. Andrew and Simon had each other, their brothers. And we heard the, the girls saying that they have each other's back, basically. So they trust in each other and also trust in God. But they say, well, what can I do? I, I might need help. Well, look around the sanctuary. A lot of people here that with plenty of helpers. And not to mention the fact that you're going to have the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That works. But then you say, oh, we're not saints like all the original apostles. Ha! Huh. Newsflash. <laughs> Those titles were given to them long after they died. And if, in fact, if you recall, those apostles sometimes <laughs> missed the mark altogether. Many times they misunderstood Jesus. Many times they were reluctant to follow Jesus. Sometimes they had their own what thinking, their own ways of doing things. No, you shouldn't have to die on a cross. They were just thinking in literal terms, in ordinary terms. They weren't looking at the big picture. Even that one that Jesus put in charge of all the others, Peter, well, good old Pete. Yeah, he's strong as a rock. Goes and denies Jesus three times. And we won't even get into Judas Iscariot. More about him in uh, Lent and the, uh, uh, the three days and things like that. But haven't we all misunderstood Jesus at some point in our lives? Or even better, hesitated to follow him, to see what he wants us to do? Maybe we weren't listening to what Christ is saying to us. Maybe, just maybe in our conversations with God, it sort of becomes like one-sided, as it were. And it all sort of ends up like, okay, God, this is what I want, and we don't wait for the response. Maybe we're a little afraid of what God's going to say and what God is calling us to do. After all, we're just ordinary, right? My brothers and sisters in Christ, maybe you won't be um, asked to don a white robe or stand in front of a congregation on a Sunday morning and preach the word, but you don't have to always preach the word with your mouth. You preach the word with your actions. And even that is just one hour a week. What about the rest of the time? Be that as it may, everyone is called in a different way. Interestingly enough, at the early service we sang a song, We Are Called. 
And the refrain of the song goes like this. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to sing or ask the band to get up and play it. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with our God. Hmm. If you think about that, that sort of covers the specific things that God may be asking you to do. And some of those things may just seem kind of ordinary to you. Oh, we do that all the time. And you don't even give it a second thought. But you never see the extraordinary effects that it has on some people. And chances are you never will. But then again, maybe you're called to do something out of your perceived comfort zone. Hmm, well, that's a little bit different, heaven forbid. No, no, heaven doesn't forbid. Maybe you like being fishers for people. How in the world are we supposed to do that? Maybe the apostles themselves wrestled with that whole concept when Jesus first said that to them. But like the apostles, we may not understand these things right off the bat. What job we're being called to do because, once again, we're just ordinary, average people. Remember this, though. Even though you may feel just ordinary at times, in God's eyes, you're always extraordinary. And you can do extraordinary things. Amen.